Nine. <laughs> Eleven o'clock. Flip. Time Didn't to start. Oh, it's a good question. All will be revealed, but we better get started. Oh, right. Eleven o'clock. Let's get started. Welcome, welcome to Sunday Scattered from Beaver Parish. It is fantastic to have you with us this morning. In our service today, we're going to be zapping all across the city. Uh, we're going to visit Joyce for the reading. We'll have some thoughts this morning from Johnny. Uh, we've got our worship. Some of it's from Paul and Ruth. Some of it's led by the Hudson family. We're going to be visiting the McCartneys. Uh, we are even going to see Susan again later on during our prayers. And for our prayers, as usual, if you could have some matches and a candle at the ready, that would be absolutely great. And we're going to have some kind of games and activities ideas from Catherine. Now, speaking of Catherine and the Carsons, you might have been wondering why I was doing my little laps there, why I was counting up my laps. Well, we're kind of thinking all about counting to get started this morning. A few weeks ago, we asked you to send us in videos of the actions to the song, My Lighthouse. And loads of you sent brilliant videos in. You were fantastic at the actions. But we noticed in the video from the Carsons, Lydia and Catherine were spot on with the actions. But Connor took a slightly different interpretation. He decided to run loop the loops around Lydia and Catherine for the whole length of the song. So I'm going to show you that video and I want you to count the amount of times Connor loops the loop. Okay, so did everyone get a chance to count? All right, now down this side of the screen is the chat box and please feel free to say hello and chat away to each other during the service. But for now, put your best guess. How many loops did you count? Put your count or your guess in the chat box now. Well, what do you think? How many? Shout it out. Well, some of you aren't too far off. Let's just watch it one more time to make absolutely sure. laps pretty impressive deserving of a round of applause i reckon now here's the link we've just been counting connor and now we're gonna sing about counting on god is that the cheesiest link you've ever heard did you hear the crunch of the gear change there uh, we have a song called counting on god which has some actions a little bit like that lighthouse uh, song so again we're going to give you guys the challenge we're going to sing the song this morning we'll post it up on the facebook page as soon as the service is over and if you guys want to take the chance during the week to film yourselves doing some of the actions you don't need to do the, all of the actions you just can do a little snippet of the song and send it along to us and we'll stitch all the videos together uh, to show in our service next Sunday but for now here is the song and don't just watch this uh, to kind of get an idea of the actions use this as our opening act of worship we're going to proclaim our faith and our trust that even in these difficult days we are counting on God Morning everybody, uh, the song this morning Jordan taught us actions to this a few months ago so we'll see how much we get right and do join in if you can.
Thanks Paul and Ruth. And brilliant actions, everyone. Almost as good as last week's Lighthouse. Speaking of last week, um, we had a really great meeting of Sunday Club Scattered last week. Um, we met on Zoom and there were about 25 of us. We learnt about Paul and Silas and their time in prison and how God helped them while they were there. Um, we also had a special guest appearance from we Adrian and we Janice, which was very exciting. Um, there's going to be more Sunday clubs scattered next week, but I'll let you know more about that during the week. Um, this week, Big Adrian is going to be telling us about Doubting Thomas, one of Jesus' disciples. Thomas asked a question of God because he wasn't sure. When we ask God a question, it creates a place in our mind where God can put an answer. Some questions that we might have might be, how do I make a decision on that? Or, what school should I go to? Or what's next? That's a good question. Um, if you look in the notes section, you'll find a list of words and your challenge today is to listen to the service and find all of those words. You can also play a missing words game which you can uh, print off um, and play after the service. Now, what's next? That's a good question. Here's Joyce with today's reading. The reading is taken from John chapter 20, verse 19 to 29. Jesus appears to his disciples. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the, the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger he here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Good morning. Our reading came from John's Gospel. John's Gospel is unlike the other Gospels of Matthew, Mark and Luke. John presents his account in a manner that wants to bring the reader on a journey. His purpose is to lead us to a conclusion about Jesus. That this Jesus, this word that became flesh and dwelt amongst us, is not just a wise man, not just a revolutionary or a miracle worker, but he is in fact divine. He is God. We don't know much about Thomas. We don't know his occupation. We know he's a twin, but we don't know who his twin is. Nevertheless, Thomas plays more of a role in this gospel than the others. Though if he was in the Oscars, he'd still be very much a supporting actor rather than a lead role. He's barely mentioned in the other gospels, but he makes a number of appearances in John's. I think Thomas is a touchstone within this gospel. He's what in literature we would call the everyman character. A character who's ordinary enough to be relatable to the average reader. He's a person we're meant to be able to identify with. As I said, he's already popped up a few times before this appearance. In John 14, he comes across as a bit ignorant when he declares he has no idea of what Jesus is talking about. When Jesus has said he's going away to prepare a heavenly home for his followers. And there's a bit of bravado about him too. 
In John 11, Lazarus has recently died and the apostles don't wish to go back to Judea. It's a place where some Jews had attempted to stone Jesus previously. Thomas shows courage, saying, Let's also go, that we may die with him. And this courage, I think, is seen in this passage. Whilst the disciples are in their own type of lockdown, Thomas is the one who's out and about, seemingly unafraid of those who would seek to have the disciples killed. And it's because he's absent, he misses Jesus' first appearance. Thomas is often given the moniker Doubting Thomas. I think this is unfair. To me, he's more of a questioner. He's pragmatic. He's like many of us. When someone tells us they've some, seen something truly unbelievable, the human reaction is, are they pulling my leg? I write. I'll see it when I believe it. To insist on proof is human nature. If you were to get caught speeding by the police, you'd likely insist on seeing the speed gun reading. Maybe when the mechanic presents you with an exorbitant price for work he's done on your car, you'll want to see what he's actually done to justify the bill. Maybe when your child has completed their homework in world record speed, you want to see the evidence to check that it's actually been done. You'd be right to question until you see the proof. It's okay to question. How sad it is that the church label and dismiss those who ask questions as doubters. Notice how Jesus dealt so compassionately with Thomas. Questions are a natural part of faith, often leading to stronger and more deeply held belief. If I wanted to push the point, I'd argue that the other disciples are the real doubters. There's a little detail often overlooked. Do you notice when Jesus comes back a week later? They've still locked the doors. Jesus has already come, breathed peace over them, but they still doubt. They're still locking themselves away in fear. Yet when Thomas sees it, he gets it straight away. He doesn't just say, yeah, you're right all along, disciples, or it's you, Jesus. No, he says five words which change everything. My Lord and my God. He declares that Jesus is Lord and God. The penny has finally dropped. Jesus isn't just a teacher, a wise man, a guru. He is God. And having Thomas, our every man character, come to this conclusion, John wants us, as the reader, to be drawn to the same. Jesus is our Lord and our God. When Thomas gets the physical sign he questioned, he's all in. He embraces the important role of proclaiming the truth that salvation has come through the risen Lord. And when the penny drops for Thomas, he goes for a big style. According to tradition, Thomas travelled the furthest out of anyone to preach the gospel, going far outside the Roman Empire to modern day Kerala in India, where he was eventually killed. This is one, just one of many, post-resurrection appearances that Jesus makes. We marry Magdalene and the other Mary at the tomb, on the road to Emmaus, breakfast on the beach with the disciples, never mind the 500 witnesses to the resurrection mentioned in Paul's letter to the Corinthians. I believe Jesus gifted, Jesus gifted people with these moments of encounter for a purpose. To show he is the risen Lord. To present them with the evidence that he is the Messiah. He gives them a crystal clear moment of truth 
to buoy up and kindle their faith. Life in the early church will not be easy. They'll face persecution as they bring forth the message of the gospel. In Acts, we'll see how they're persecuted, thrown in prisons, condemned to death. These encounters, which point to the truth of the risen Lord, are moments of consolation, moments of certainty to build up one's faith, to reminisce upon when times are tough, to spur them on. This event comes at the end of the Gospel, and I think the Gospels are open-ended because they're written with pages yet to be written, which involve us. Yet we face our own times of uncertainty and testing. We are all in lockdown ourselves, may be afraid of the future. Uncertainty lies ahead. It's good to recall and remind ourselves of the time we realised Jesus was our Lord. There's a time in many of our lives when we concluded that Jesus was Messiah, Lord and King. When the penny dropped for us and we got it, and we let this become the most important thing in our lives. Maybe for some of you, this was when you accepted Jesus as your Lord and King as a young child. And I know from my conversations with some of you, that it was often a time of personal trial that you met God. Maybe you've examined and explored the claims of the Bible through something like Alpha and decided or declared, yes, Jesus is my Lord and King. C.S. Lewis described himself as the most dejected and reluctant convert in all of England. He describes how he tried with all his might and intellect to avoid coming to Christ, but in the end, he succumbed. Now there was a man who persisted in questioning of God and not settling for easy answers. And if you haven't had an encounter with the risen Jesus, my hope is that this will become a reality in your life. When we're struggling and life's walls are closing in, it's good to cast your mind back, savour your experience of God's goodness. This can give you strength for now. Darkness and light are key themes in John's Gospel. And Adrian talked last week about the importance of turning towards the light. How often we can get caught in darkness, especially in the desolate times we live in. The word desolation literally means away from the sun. When we're in desolation, our tendency is to turn from the light. Despair can take over. Darkness can crowd out the larger vision God has shown us. The opposite of desolation is consolation. The word consolation literally means, with the sun, to live a life directed towards the light, towards God and God's kingdom, with the darkness behind us. When we look towards the light, Focus on the goodness of God. It lifts our hearts and our energy. It restores our balance, refreshes our inner vision, and we can see where God has been active in our lives and where he is leading us. Faith is never static. Faith is always ongoing, deepening, growing. The Lord continuously births faith in us so we can know and follow his will. Though Jesus has ascended to heaven, if we pay attention, I really believe we can notice God at work in our daily lives. Notice the kindness of others, the comfort we get from reading the gospel or times of prayer, the care of loved ones. And even this week I noticed the blossoming of bluebells everywhere showing God's ongoing creativity. God is dynamic, 
alive, always present. So the choice is ours. We can continue to be locked down, afraid and unsure, living in despair, confusion, letting fear dominate. Or we can hear the word, hear the voice, look for the signs of God with us, continue to believe and trust that Jesus is our Lord and our God. And let this shape everything. Almighty and eternal God, who for the firmer foundation of our faith allowed your holy apostle Thomas to question the resurrection of your son, till word and sight convinced him, grant to us who have not seen that we also may believe and so confess Christ as our Lord and God, who is alive and reigns with us. Amen. Michelle will now lead us in our hymn. Today, Johnny has been encouraging us to follow in the path of Thomas, making those inquiries, reaching out to Jesus and finding himself moving into a whole new area of faith. So today we thought it would be good for ourselves if we joined in a form of the creed. So I'm going to say the first line and Janice will lead the response and the words will come up on the screen. He was the son of God. He was the son of man. He was born to be a king. He was a child of Mary. He was the greatest among rulers. He was the least among servants. He was loved and honoured. He was despised and rejected. He was total perfection. He was a friend of sinners. He was a joyful companion. He was a man of sorrows. He said, 
Don't be anxious. He said, trust in me. In him was life. Yet he died on a cross. Dead and buried in a tomb. But neither could hold him. He draws near to those who doubt. My Lord and my God. He reaches out with wounded hands. My Lord and my God. He invites us into newness. My Lord and my God. He is Christ the Lord. My, my Lord, Lord and my, my God. God. Amen. Amen. Now, Chris and Susan, I think, are going to lead us in our prayers. Okay, folks, so it's time for our prayers. So if you manage to find a candle and some matches or a lighter, uh, get them at the ready. But don't light the candles just yet. We're going to do things a little bit differently today. We're going to pray three prayers about lightening our darkness. And once we've joined in those words, lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord. We'll light the candles, leave them flickering for a couple of moments while we pray in silence. And then we blow them out, ready for the next prayer. Is that all clear as mud? Perfectly. All right, okay. <laughs> so let's go and let's still our souls and let us pray. When we describe these days of lockdown and isolation, the word we often use is unprecedented. And so our prayer is for unprecedented grace. When we feel helpless, we pray for more strength than we've ever known before. When we're fearful or anxious, we pray for more peace than we've ever experienced before. When we're full of doubts and uncertainties, we pray for more faith than we've ever encountered before. In our weakness and in our searching, lighten our, our darkness. darkness. We beseech thee, O Lord. And so carefully we blow out our candles and our second prayer is for a lightening of the darkness as we look around us uh, at our friends and neighbours, our community. We pray for those we know who are alone in their homes. We take a moment of quiet to name those that we know. Lord, surround us with support and community and love. Nourish us with your presence. We pray for those we know who are not alone in their homes, who are sharing space with family or friends. And again, we take a moment of quiet to name those we know. Lord, we pray there will be precious times of family and fellowship in these days. And when things get a little bit ragged around the edges, Fill us with patience and forbearance. Nourish us with your peace. We pray for those facing illness. And once more, we take a moment of quiet to name those we know. We remember those who were dealing with health conditions long before the current pandemic. We pray for those who are struggling to access care and treatment. We pray for those facing depression or despair. We pray for those in our community in practical need from day to day. Nourish us with our daily bread. And so in our households and in our neighbourhoods, lighten Light our darkness. darkness. We beseech thee, O Lord.
And once more, if you carefully blow out your candle and in our third prayer, we pray for a lightening of the darkness as we look forwards. The future is always unknown, but at the moment, it's just one big question mark. We pray for those who are worried about the future. We pray for those who are anxious about their businesses or jobs or finances. We pray for those who face impossible decisions about easing and reopening over the coming months. We pray that even in this darkness, lessons will be learnt, eyes will be opened, perspectives realigned. May we be ready to not take the road straight back to where we were, but to a new and better path. In our futures and in our choices, lightening Lighten our, our darkness, darkness we, we beseech thee, O oh Lord. And we sum up all of our prayers, joining together across all of our different households in all our different corners of the city in that beautiful prayer that Jesus taught us, our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. And one more time, very carefully. So folks, thank you so much for joining us this morning, for praying with us, for worshipping with us, for sharing with us. It is just such a privilege to be able to connect like this week by week. We're going to uh, finish our service now by handing over to the Hudsons again, who are going to lead us in our final hymn. You ready to sing? Are you going to sing this time? Oh, it's a good question. Let's just see. So we're going to join together. Christ will hold me fast.
That was a great message this morning, really challenging about that whole sense of wanting to inquire and explore further. Let's never become people who don't go on inquiring, asking, searching and looking for more because that's really key to growing in our faith. So what's next? That's a really good question. Children, you've been watching and listening for all the words on the list. I hope you find them all. Catherine has put a story into the notes tab on the screen here. If you have a wee look at that, you'll see the story of today's talk and everything else. And you can fit the words, see if you can fit the words in so the whole story makes sense. And that will help you with what we've been doing today. A couple of other things I want to remind you of happening every day. One is our usual candle continues and we're way over 40 now, which is amazing. Uh, the candle happens six o'clock every night. The other thing that's now happening every day, we've just had a couple of them, is word for today, as in UCB notes, are on the phone line every morning. If you just uh, type in the number, phone the number, you'll get to hear that message and you might recognise some of the voices. They're all Beaver voices, it's all done by us, even though we're using the UCB notes. You can get that any day. Do feel free to pass that on to other people as well. It changes every day of the week. Other thing that we want to encourage you about is that there are lots of WhatsApp groups and huddles happening around the place. If you want to be in any of those or you feel that you're not connected enough to some things, please let us know and we'll see if we can join you in with one of those. Now, every week there are high points. Some of the pictures, some of the things, very funny. Some of the prayers that we have to pray, some of the good news that we hear. I saw a photograph this week and it made my heart leap with excitement. So this morning we want to, we'll show you the photo in just a wee minute, but we want to just welcome Adam and Liz and Trevor. And they're very much at the heart of what it means to be family in Beaver. And Adam got a haircut. I think Liz was the hairdresser, but here's a picture and he looks really dashing and smart. And Adam, you're looking great. And we just wish so much that we could all be together in a way that allows you to be at the heart of everything that we are. So welcome to you and to Liz and Trevor this morning. Let's just take a wee moment because we are spread out all over the place and yet somehow mysteriously we're connected to one another through God. Let's be still. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you, be amongst you, be round you, be gathering you, be strengthening you this day and forevermore. Amen. Now you don't need to rush away quite yet. Do feel free to stay on and continue to send messages to one another. Catch up with a wee bit of news there. But if you have to go, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm.